This is Skull Namara, video number one. And I'm on my way to the beach, one of the beautiful beaches that we have in West Cork. Did you know that around the coast of Ireland, the total distance of the coastline is over 3,000 kilometers? So we are so lucky to have so many beautiful beaches and amazing coastline. And there are some really wonderful places to explore. My name's Mairead and today I'm going to go explore the seashore and I thought it'd be cool to make a video so that I could show you what animals I find. The seashore is a really fascinating place for animals to live because they need to be able to survive both in and out of the water and because of that some of the animals are really interesting. All you need is a piece of paper or a page in your copybook and something to write with and I'll help you to make notes about the different animals I find to help you remember some interesting facts. In this video I'm going to show you three different types of animals that live on the rocky seashore. I'll tell you a bit about the similarities and differences between those animals and we'll also talk about something that's super important, biodiversity. So I'll tell you a bit about what that means. So let's go, will we? So you'll find a lot of these type of shells on the seashore. They're a volcano shape and they're kind of a, a, a pretty dull sort of beige colour. They don't look super interesting, but they're actually really, really cool. These are called limpets and they have a really strong foot that attaches them to the rock. They need to be really tight to the rock when the tide goes out because they're exposed to the air and they don't want to dry out too much. They'll move around when the water's in but you won't generally see them moving around when the tide is out because they just want to stick on really tight to the rock um, and make sure that the air doesn't get in. And a limpet has what's called a home scar. So it always comes back to the same place, which is really cool. There's a little circle on the rock. I'll show you an example of it. And they'll always come back to this groove in the rock where their shell fits in nightly, nicely and they, they stick really tightly to the rock. And when they go to feed, they follow, they leave a trail behind them. And when they're coming back to their home scar, they'll follow, follow that trail back. So you see an example of that here. There's a limpet after following its trail back here over. This must be its, its where its home scar is. So it's a really, really cool adaptation to living on the seashore because it means they get this really tight attachment to the rock and they always come back to the same place. Limpets are a type of herbivore, which means that they don't eat other animals. And they feed by grazing on algae that are on the rock. They have a, a thing inside their bodies, a structure inside their bodies called a radula. And that's got maybe a hundred rows or more of teeth on it. And the teeth are made of really, really strong material. It's thought to be the strongest material that any animal makes, stronger than spider silk and they use these really strong teeth to scrape scrape algae off the rocks there's a really good example here of some limpet teeth marks all along this rock you can see where they've been grazing so they've been eating this algae that's on the rock with their really really strong teeth so it's pretty cool for those for those shells that don't look super interesting from the outside or super exciting They've actually got a lot of really cool ad adaptations. And this limpet that would have been grazing here would have followed its trail back to its home scar and stuck on, like we were talking about earlier, stuck on really tight to the home scar when the tide was going out. So to help you remember about the limpets, I want you to write down some notes now in your copybook or on a piece of paper. And the first thing I want you to write is limpet, so just the name. And then the next thing I want you to write is home scar. So remember that's the place where they attach to the rock, so it's called a home scar. 
And then if you remember, they are herbivores. So I want you to write the word herbivore. And they feed on plants like algae on the rock by grazing. So I want you to write the word grazer. So you've got limpet, home scar, herbivore, grazer. And they're pretty cool. Love the limpet. <laughs> So here's another really fascinating um, type of shellfish. These ones here are called dog whelks and they're similar to limpets in that they're gastropods. So gastropod means stomach and foot. Gastro means stomach, pod means foot. And these, these type of animals, gastropods, have their stomach and their foot is the same thing in their body. So dog whelks use this really strong foot to attach to the rocks so that they don't get swept off by the water or the waves. And the other thing they do, which you can kind of see them doing here, is that they hide in behind the rocks. So you won't find them on very exposed places on the rocks. They'll always be tucked in behind in a crevice where they can get, where they can get some shelter from the waves and from the water. And these are really pretty shells. They're, they're really lovely looking shells, but they're actually ferocious predators. So don't be fooled by the pretty looks. They are here at the moment, close to some of their favorite type of food. So they like to eat mussels and barnacles. And they do this by drilling a hole in the shell of the mussel or barnacle. So you can see one here at the moment, looks like it's feeding on a mussel and there's another one here right on top of some barnacles. They have like a, a toothed structure that they can drill the hole in the in the other animal with and then they inject a type of chemical so it's got enzymes in it that chemical digests the body of the other animal and then they suck it out like a, a mussel soup so when they're eating on a when they're feeding on an animal or on a mussel they could spend maybe a week digesting the mussel and and filling up on on mussel soup so they are a type of carnivore, they eat other animals and they are a predator. And what's really, really cool, this is actually really exciting to see this. You can see in here there are some dog whelk eggs. So right behind there, there's kind of grape, tiny grape seed uh, shaped eggs. And a dog whelk will lay hundreds of eggs, but not all of them will survive. And when the small baby dog whelks are growing, what they'll do to feed when they're very young is that they'll eat other eggs. So it's kind of like they're eating their brothers and sisters, which um, maybe that's something to remember. The next time you're, next time you're having an argument with your brother or sister, just uh, remind them that at least you're not a dog whelk and that you're not going to eat them. So there they are. We'll write down some notes about the dog whelk so that we remember. So the three points I want you to write down. First of all, I want you to write the name. So it's dog whelk. And next, I want you to write between the rocks. So just to remind yourself of where, where they'll shelter to get protection from the ocean. So between the rocks. The next thing is they're a carnivore. So they eat other types of animal. So they're a carnivore. Write the word carnivore. And then the last thing I want you to remember about them is that they are a predator. So that's the dog whelk. Dainty but deadly. Now to talk about one of their favorite prey items. These are, this is a lovely bed of mussels. Mussels are another type of shellfish but they're a bit different from from the limpets and the dog whelks they're not a gastropod and mussels have two two shells so they're called bivalves and the way that mussels attach to the rock is that you can see here they have these threads called byssus threads that they use to attach really really strongly to the rock and to protect them from the waves and from the ocean so that's their adaptation to stay stay attached in their habitat. 
So they have these byssus threads. If you've ever cooked mussels, you'll know that before you cook them, you need to remove the beard. So that's another word. Um, the correct term for it is byssus threads, but sometimes people call it the beard of the mussel. That's what they attach to the rock with. And they can, in fact, use these byssus threads to, tr to trap dog whelks if dog whelks are coming to eat them. So the dog whelk, sometimes they can manage to, to catch the dog whelk in the byssus threads and the dog whelk doesn't get a chance to feed and the dog whelk starves. So sometimes the mussels get their, their own back on the, on the dog whelks. Mussels are omnivores, so they eat both plants and animals. And they do that by filtering, filtering the water. So they suck water into their shell and then they filter food from the water. So they eat tiny, tiny um, plants and animals. So plankton from the water. So zooplankton are, are the animal plankton and phytoplankton are the, are the plant, 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 plant plankton. So um, mussels feed on, on those types of plant, plankton by sucking the water in and filtering the plankton from the water. And what's also quite interesting is that mussels are quite affected by plastic pollution. I know that we, when we think of plastic pollution in the ocean, we think a lot of, about bigger animals like fish or turtles or whales and dolphins. But in actual fact, mussels are affected as well because when plastic is in the ocean, it breaks down into smaller and smaller pieces. And these become microplastics or microfibers. And when mussels are feeding, they, they suck in the water that they're going to filter, and quite often they can suck in microfibers as well. So that's another good reason to make sure that we try and stop plastic pollution in the ocean, because it's affecting smaller animals as well. So a few things to write down about the mussel so that you remember. The first thing I want you to write is the name. So write mussel. Um, that's the name of the animal. The second thing I want you to write is write down byssus thread. So that's their adaptation for attaching to the rock. So it's the byssus thread, sometimes called the beard. And then the next thing I want you to write down is omnivore because they eat both plants and animals. So they're an omnivore. And then the last thing I want you to eat is describing the way that they, they feed. They are filter feeders. So you have muscle, byssus thread, omnivore, filter feeders. And that's the muscle. And remember, by preventing plastic pollution, you're also minding the muscle. It was really fun and interesting to look at the different animals on the rocks. All these different species, it's just so fascinating that they've found different ways to adapt to their environment. They've found different ways to stay attached to the rock and protect it from the waves. They eat different things, they have different ways of feeding. And this is all part of what biodiversity is. So biodiversity means different living things, different types of living thing. And what we saw today were three different species and they form part of the beautiful Irish biodiversity on, on the rocky shore. So it's important to remember that term biodiversity and I want you to make a note of it in your copy books or on your piece of paper. So write the word biodiversity and you can write a little description of it and it's that it's different types of living thing. So biodiversity is different types of living thing. So it'd be really cool if you do a little exercise all through in your copy books. Use some of the notes that you've taken today. So some of the words that you wrote down to remember about the different species, the different types of animal. And what I'd like you to do is to write a little short story. It can be just a few lines long. You can make it longer if you're feeling creative. Write a little short story about a limpet, a mussel and a dog whelk who are all friends and they all live on the same rock. And you can give them names. You can give some, your story some hashtags like mind the mussel or love the limpet. 
and I'd really love to see what stories you come up with so you can email them to me at skullnamara at gmail.com you'll see the email address on the screen and I'd love to see what fun stories you come up with about animals living on the rocky shore. Now it's just about low tide and the water is going to start coming in soon so I better get out of here but hopefully I'll see you again someday soon and we'll go explore some more rocky shore and rock pools. When you get to go explore the seashore yourself there are a few things that are really important to remember. The first thing is always go with an adult. The second thing, check the tide times before you go. So the best time to go rock pooling or exploring the seashore is before the time of low tide. And you've got to be really careful when the water starts to come back in when it's moving towards high tide because it'll cover the rocks and you really, really don't want to get stuck on the rocks. The third th thing to remember is to wear shoes that are uh, secure and that have good grip on the rocks. I like to wear a pair of old runners, they're perfect. And wellies can be good as well sometimes. And then the final thing is always leave no trace. So what I mean by that is when I go to the beach or the seashore or anywhere in nature or in the countryside, I don't leave anything behind me. I make sure to bring everything home with me. Um, I don't bring any animals or shells because the seashore is where they belong. So Remember always in the countryside, at the beach, wherever you are, leave no trace.